Morning, how are we? Um, I'm Tom, and I just wanted to really share with you my experience of, uh, you know, building one of these uh, grain stores, really, because the price is obviously for steel, wood, concrete, has all got a bit out of control. And I thought, well, I think I can do that a bit cheaper if you do it yourself. So I'm just gonna run through with you what, you know, the process of obviously planning permission, building it, and then everything to ride up to the end concrete in the floor. So obviously the first thing you have to do in uh, putting one of these grain store sheds, facilities, whatever you want to call it up, is uh, the planning permission. So the planning permission here in the UK, you obviously have to submit um, a form and then you have to submit some plans, what you're planning on doing. So the first thing you do um, here in Rutland, with, we're with uh, Rutland County Council. So you just get one of their forms or now they're using an online service called the planning portal. So you can just fill everything in online. It's quite easy, it probably takes about 40 minutes to fill, fill everything in. Um, yeah, fill everything in, the size, the height, what materials you're using on the roof, on the sides, um, you know, what sort of color as well. And then all they want after that is, you know, sort of a, a design of just draw on a bit of paper, really, what it, what it will look like. It's pretty straightforward. You don't need any architects or anything to do it. You just shove it in and call at it and they'll either say yes or no. But with an agricultural building, you know, they're, they're most likely to say yes, depending on where it is. So yeah, planning, pretty straightforward. I managed, I put about five or six sheds up now and every time passed, not a problem. So yeah, it's good. So this building here, this building here is 60 foot wide by 100 foot long. So each bay is, each bay here, 20 foot long and there's five of them. And then to the eaves, the eaves are obviously these bits up here where this first bit of wood is. They're uh, 20 foot there. So I want them fairly high. So you can obviously tip trailers in it, Arctic lorries, whatever you want. Um, these concrete walls here, I was gonna go another concrete wall panel higher, but I've never actually got round to it. But these here at the moment, these are these are three meters high here at the moment. So this is sort of a typical grain store. And then also as well at the front, I've got a big roller shutter door. I wanted that as high as possible so that we could, have, when I'm loading lorries, I can drive out without hitting the door. So I had that made to obviously go literally as high as I could. So that, because a lot of the time, if you have one a bit lower, when you're going out with the JCB bucket, you know, loading the lorry, you come back, end up hitting the door and it just wrecks it. So for that extra little bit, I'm pleased I did that. So I've actually got about eight of these buildings at the moment. Half of them are for storing grain, some of them fertilizer. Then we've got two big ones for uh, cattle as well. Um, so I'm, but I'm gonna put another building up cause I wanna do some more grain storage at this time in the market. It's very versatile up and down, so I want to obviously store the grain as long as possible or when the price is right. So then we sort of have control over when when we sell it. You know, if it's in the store, it doesn't matter. It can sit there. So so this area here, I've, uh, I've already moved the fence. So the, this is the old fence just here. Um, I've moved the new fence out. You see it out over here. So the shed will be just here. And I did start doing some digging the other day, but I'll do a bit more in a bit. So yeah, I've moved the fence. It used to come down here. Now I've moved it around there. So this whole area just here that we're looking at, this will all be sort of a turning turning area. And then the door will be here. I want it, I want it in line with this, this shed here as well. So, you know, it'd be the same size as this shed, but I want, I'm gonna come a bit, I'm gonna come a bit away from it. So the posts of the shed will be in line with this. So the first thing I've got to do is dig all this soil out here. So there's, there's quite a big area to come out. I'd say there's probably, there's probably six, 700 tons to come out, but we're quite lucky where we are. We're in obviously Lincolnshire where it's very limestoney. If you look at the floor here, this is all, this isn't concrete, this is solid limestone. So you can see here, we've got about, 
we've got about 10 inches of soil here then we're into some shale and then we hit bedrock so we've got 10 inches of soil to come out 10 inches of stone to come out that we'll probably repair some farm tracks with and then straight away we're in solid bedrock so you know it's going to be really good for sitting you know i haven't got to buy any aggregate in i haven't got to buy any hardcore so hopefully yeah we'll take the soil out we'll spread that on some of the fields where we've got some stony patches in the field to obviously when we're plowing it it'll st you know all the points it wears them out doesn't do them a lot of good so we'll use it use the soil there we use the it's like 50 mil 50 mil mixed limestone you see it here so we'll use that on some tracks and then probably keep some for you know if we have to level the bottom of the grain store up to uh you know for the concrete probably keep a bit for that but i'm hoping that the concrete slab will sit directly on top of this bedrock so i've uh, started digging this out now got a 16 ton jcb js 160 and then i'm just putting it in the back of a uh, 20 ton brown trailer I actually got the planning permission now. It took took about eight to ten weeks to come through, which is sort of the standard amount of time. scraping the soil off now all over here look that's the trailer i used had the eight ton digger as well just to scrape a few more bits from around the edges and stuff so yeah it took a bit more than what i thought out probably about 350 ton but now there's all the stones come out and i've just started taking the stone out which is we well, couldn't ask for much better could you so yeah taking all this stone out and we're scraping it down to the bedrock which is here so this is going to be a really good base to work on you, you'd think that's concrete, but it's not. It's just it's solid bedrock. So yeah, next thing to do, we're gonna take yeah, get use all this stone uh, to repair some farm tracks, and then uh, the next thing to do will be setting all the shed out, setting all the bolts ready to uh, start putting the frame up. So still digging this stone out. This has turned into a a lot bigger job than what I thought. Here it is. Look taken all this lot out so far and then still got all that to do over there there is tons and tons and i didn't quite realize how much of a slope there was on the field so you can see that end over there down there it's not very deep it's probably only about a foot and a half thick up here over here look nearly sort of four and a half foot thick so you can see look topsoil bit of shaley rock 50 mil and then we're into the bedrock so yeah this is yeah <laughs> there's loads to come out i don't even know where i'm gonna put it all there we go i've just kept about what is it there about 300 ton I've just kept about 300 ton back to, uh, you see, look, 
levered it all off. Well, r roughly. I'm gonna have to use a laser level now. So that's the next step. The old laser level, which is here. I've got a uh, Topcon RLH4C. This is the staff. Really easy bit of kit to use, especially especially these new laser levels like that one. You just turn it on and it'll level itself up. So I'm gonna walk over here onto some of this stone. I'm just I'm spreading a bit of uh, spreading a bit of this cleaner shaley stone to level the whole base up. So let's have a look, see how far out I am. So let's have a look. That beep basically means, I don't know if you can see that, down a little bit, up a little bit, oh, camera's in the way. So yeah, down a little bit, down a little bit, level, which is pretty much there. So I'm sure over this whole bit, let's check this bit over here. This bit here. Yeah, so we've got about, four inches underneath that so i'm sure there's a few holes here there and everywhere so i've got to go over the whole thing now and then well i'll roll it first so vibrating roll all over it smash all the stone up and then i'm going to go over with a laser and then use some of that stone out of that heap to sort of level level it up so because it's easier to do it all now than it is when the shed's up to pull the concrete so i want to get the whole site level so it's all done ready for concrete all right next thing to do is make the bolt boxes these go in the concrete. Here's a finished one here. Like this. So it's just one massive bolt. 100mm washer, which sits on the bottom there. And then one of the wax cones. So they sit like this. That, and they stay they stay in the concrete so it can't they can't pull out. And then we've got a centre thing here which is where the uh, bloke comes and he puts his little staff to make sure we've got them in the right place. So yeah, we'll sit these into the concrete. The concrete will come up to this level here. And then when the concrete's gone off, we'll take the bit of wood off, which will leave our, leave our bolts in the right place. So we've got, got about 12, four, obviously we have one for each stanchion. So yeah. Right, so all the bolt boxes are made. The roofing sheets I've just turned up, which are all there. So I've got 10 degrees roof, uh, ridge, sorry. Um, five foot six sheets. These are all 10 foot sheets. Um, then I've got my roof lights as well. These are the barge boards. Go on the edges. They're the two crowns for the top. So I've used Eternit sheets because I think they're better quality, just for the reason being some of the other sheets that I've used before, these these seem to be quite a lot thicker than other companies and that and they've got reinforcing in them as well and they're made in the uk so yeah that's the roofing sheets ready to go on right some of the steel started to arrive so these tubular lengths here are the uh the wind bracing so you see up there one two three four five six so we've got six of them and then we'll have two that go in the side as well like that uh, to support you only support the the first bay wind bracing so it stiffens the whole thing up um got some flat plate here which is the flat plate for these bits here those bits there that weld onto there got some angle iron which is the angle for the uh for these uh to hold the wood so i'll just cut it into like bits about that long weld it on and the wood sits on top of it over here i have all this steel cut because it's easier than me putting it in my bandsaw it just saves a lot of time so these bits of angle here they're all those bits of angle just there look like that um all this plate here so these plates here these are 15 mil thick right so these plates here will obviously drill four holes and then these the stanchion goes on top of here and welds to the top. So this is the bottom of the stanchion that bolts to the floor. These bits here, these are all 20 mil thick, quite thick. I'm gonna take some drilling they are. They're the bits that weld onto the RSJs up the top there. Uh, they weld to those bits of steel there. So there's two up there, one down there. So there's quite a lot of them to drill as well. So I've got all them 
all these all these have got to be drilled now so for quite time consuming what i've done i've made myself like a template just here look so the same holes as up there right so i've started drilling the holes just here look and the way we're doing this is with a mag drill this thing here if you get a rotor boat drill bit as well you can see look it it only drills the outsides and then what it does it punches the middle out so you're only drilling like a third of what you you have to so because it's quite a thick plate it does take quite a lot of drilling but with this it's obviously a lot lot easier so the only things you're going to need for making this shed really is mag drill just use a little cordless grinder for cleaning these up a bit there's all the swarf coming out you want a decent bandsaw as well and you also want a decent welder as well, like a three-phase welder. So this is what I've been using, BOC 320C. And that is all you, they're pretty much the only tools you'll need. Right, so I've marked the stanchion bases out. So it's a meter square, usually by about a meter deep, because this is solid rock, probably won't go very deep. So the bolts will sit in sort of the center of there. So there's the first one there. You can't see them, but there's a load more down there. Here's the next one here. So the 20 foot bay, so each one's 20 foot apart. And then, yeah, 60 foot wide over there. So 100, 100 foot long, 60 foot wide, six, six posts, one, two, three, four. Yeah, six posts each side. So a mate of mine's come out and measured them for me with his little, with his little device, but I wasn't here when he did that. So I haven't filmed that, but I will film him when he's setting the bolts in and obviously using his little device to um, get them in the right place because this is really, really important. Like literally, if you don't get these bolts in right or they're slightly high or too low, then it throws the whole shed out. Because if one's slightly high, it makes the roof, yeah, the roof won't go on properly on that bit. Or if one's that way slightly or one that way, all the, the roof sheets won't go on properly. So it's really, really important. This is literally the most important job of the whole shed. Right, I'm digging the foundations out now. Wet, horrible day. And that's what I've done. You can't quite see it, but it's about eight. I'm down to bedrock, so it's like 800 by probably a metre by a metre. 800 deep. So, yeah, the bolt's sitting there nicely. All down there, look. There they all are. So what we'll do when we've dug all these, we'll fill them with concrete, and then we'll, we'll push the bolts back in to them, and then let it go off, and hopefully they're in the right place. So here's the last hole to do, these four blue parts, and it's proving very difficult. It is completely, it's solid rock. So now I'm gonna have to go and get a jackhammer, a breaker, and break it all out and keep digging it out. So luckily it's not all of them, there's only a few like this. Right, so we've jackhammered the first bit out, and this is what's coming out, look big shards of rock and then I'll try and dig a bit more and then keep jackhammering and keep jackhammering it's a real pain but it's better than being in some real soft horrible clay there we are these are what the foundations like just complete solid rock see down there rock you just have to keep breaking it out so this is one massive bit of rock really but you have to keep breaking it and breaking it just to break it up into smaller bits to get it out right so we're ready for concrete this is what we're using called a total station. You can hire which is what we've done so many hire. There you go. And then this will pinpoint, this has got like a little laser in it and it uses a satellite I think as well and it'll sort of it'll sort of pinpoint exactly where those bolts need to go so you can see all the bolt boxes around the outside. Alright, here comes the concrete. I've got a volumetric concrete mixer, so he'll mix what we want, so we don't have any waste, because no idea how much concrete's going in these holes, because, you know, they're all over the place being in this rock. So yeah, we'll just back up to each hole and fill it up to level. I've got the laser level, filling all the holes up to the right height. 
bust hole for this side. Mate, it's down there putting the bolts in. I'm using the laser level to get them to the right height. Just filling the concrete lorry up. It ain't quite got enough, so we're putting in some mountain sand and gravel in. First row of bolts is in. So this bit of kit here at the moment is sending sending like lasers or whatever it's doing in that bit in the top, that little bit there. Send them back to him and it's measuring the distance between it all. So he sets it all out on his little laptop and then he this this thing here plots where to put them with that little staff you just see him using. Quite a clever bit of kit. So the next day, I've undone the bolts on the bolt boxes. I want to um, I want to do this before the concrete goes completely hard. So it's had it's had 12, 13 hours on it. Well, no more than that. Probably 15 hours. So I'll take the wood off, and that's what we're left with. And I just want to give the bolts a bit of a wiggle. So the whole idea of these cones is so that we can move the stanchion wherever we want in those cones if we want to. And then when the stanchion's on the shed's all put up, we'll grout them in with some like neat cement to fill them all up. Right, next one. I found the easiest way of loosening the bolts up is to just kick them. Just go around. Like that. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna tighten the bolts back up so that no muck can drop down in the cones until um, we come back a couple of weeks time to build the shed and there we have it all the bolt boxes in right so all the wood has just arrived it's all come from Ger germany i'm guessing so what i've done i've stacked it under the straw shed because we don't want it sitting outside getting wet because it has a tendency to sap all the water up and then can bow so i've laid it all flat so it all stays flat. The worst, the last thing you want is to obviously try and put bent timbers in to the roof up there like that. So that's what these are for. All these are for all these timbers in the roof. Right, so here are all the cleats for the sides to hold the wood to. These are for all the ones in the top to hold the purlins for the roof. Loads of more bits and bobs everywhere. These are all the steel square plates that I've drilled. Drilled about 400 holes so far. It has taken a few days, but I just keep doing it in the evenings and at weekends. And I've drilled all the RSJs. These are all the upright stanchions. I've used that as a template and just measured it in the right place and then drilled them all. So that's another job done. Over here is, just got a stanchion on here and just welding it all together at the moment. There's one of the plates. There's my welding. Down there, and then these are some finished ones over here. 
So I've got a few other cleats on, a few other bits. So I've got to red oxide them all and then paint them green. That bit there is for the tubular wind bracing. So I'm marking each one as I go, which which post is which, so I know where it goes. So, here we are. So these are all the steels put up in the roof. And I've had all the angles cut on them, 10 degrees exactly. So it's just, it's just a lot easier for them to do it, like the steel works, whoever you buy them off to say, can you, can you cut all the angles for me? I mean, I can do it here, but it is quite time consuming and uh, they won't fit through the door either. So I'm going to put the JCB in crab steer, like that look, to try and maneuver them into the shed. Right, the first one of these is now in. I'll just tack this on the end, this bit here. And then what I've got to do, I've got a plasma cut, or you can grind whatever, it's just easier to plasma cut it. I've got a plasma cut, a bit of plate, uh, I've got a bit of 6mm, 200mm wide, 6mm plate. So I'll plasma cut like a triangle out of there. It'll probably run quite far up to here. And then I've got some flat plate. So that triangle bit sits in there like that. And then the flat plate will sit sort of like that and come up underneath it. And then the only other bits we've got to do is just weld all, the, all those cleats on down there like that. They all go up here, depending on, you know, how we know the sizes is because of the roof sheet. So the first ones will be sort of fairly close together because they're five foot six sheets. And then the next ones, the next two up, will be a lot further apart because they're 10 foot sheets. Right, this end plate's on. Pleats are going on. These are what hold all the wood on the roof. So I welded all them on. So the only other bits to do on these now is the bits underneath. And here it is, all done, one at, can't see it, but there's one at that end and one at this end. So the only last thing to do now, all the welding's done. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna red oxide it. So I'm gonna paint it, I'll roll, her, I'll roll her brush it or paint it with a paintbrush. I'll red oxide all, all the steel. And then what I'm gonna do, leave it to dry and then I'm gonna green paint it. So yeah, pretty much there now. And, um, some of you are probably wondering what the sort of cost saving is by doing it yourself. So I had quite, I had two or three quotes off sort of shed companies to do this, you know, a few months prior to me starting this and the rough cost is, it's, it's insane now. So for a, for a kit barn, just to buy the kit that comes with the, con with the concrete walls, um, the door. So this isn't erected. This is just sent as a kit barn to you, and then you obviously have to put it up, put all the foundations in. So that coming about seventy nine thousand, eighty thousand, somewhere around there. So that's that's a lot of money. And I thought, well, I'm sure we can do it a bit cheaper with some better materials. So the steel came in. All these RSJs and everything that come cut and everything. That all came in at fourteen and a half thousand. The concrete panels, so I've got I've gone too high. The first one is 1500 high, and then the next one is 1400 high. So we're just shy of three meters, but we're gonna lose six inches of that in the concrete because we don't wanna sit the concrete panels on top of the concrete floor or else the rain water can get underneath. They came in at 11,500. The wood for all the roof and all the sides and everything, all these prices have gone up an awful lot since I've last done it. They've probably nearly doubled in the last year or two. The wood came in at 4,800 pounds. All the tin sides, um, goose wing grey, box profile, all the sides and everything, they came in at 5,180. Uh, the roller shutter door, so a 20 foot wide, uh, not quite, I think, can't, no, it's not 20 foot high, I think it's 19 foot high. That came in at 3,000. Um, the fibre cement roof, so that's all the roof, all the barge boards, everything I showed you earlier. That came in at 6,400. So for one week's work of doing all this, all that total comes to 45,380 pounds, which sounds a lot of money, but if you put it against another building, you know, I'm saving for a week's work, 
I've saved £34,500, which is a massive, massive saving. So, you know, I'm really pleased with that. The foundations as well, they, you know, I wasn't going to count them at the moment because obviously they didn't come in all the other shed, shed quotes and everything. But the dig out, obviously I did it all myself, um, didn't have to get rid of anything. So, you know, what's that cost me? A bit of diesel, a couple of days work. So let's call that a thousand pounds for the dig out. Um, then the foundations themselves, a mate of mine come and help me and he knows how to use those total stations. So he uses them and we obviously went out and hired one, which is probably, what are they, three, two, 300 quid for the week. So. And then the concrete for the foundations come to a thousand pounds. So to do all the foundations, the bolt boxes as well, all the bolt boxes for all the bolts and everything, they probably come to about 500 pounds. So let's say all the foundations for the, all the concrete to have them poured, put all the bolt boxes in and everything, let's round it off 2000 pounds. So, you know, that's pretty good to be fair. So yeah, I'm really pleased with that. So I'm gonna do a part two as well. I'm going to do a part two of obviously putting all this steel work up. You know, I won't be fitting the roof. I get someone in to do that because they have to net it all and everything for safety reasons. Um, but we'll do all the concrete sides and then we're going to do all the concrete floor. So hopefully that'll be in a couple of months time. I'll do another video. Um, but until then, you know, subscribe, like, share, Instagram, TomLam980. And um, I'll see you soon.